Words at War presents Paris Underground by Etta Scheiber. <laughs> Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline, what is it, child? I, I can't stand it, Madame Scheiber. I must get out of here. Oh, hush, my child, the guard will come. I don't care. What can be worse than this? Freezing in this cell huddled together. No chance to wash, nothing to eat. Shh, hush, the guard. <laughs> hush. What's going on here? Oh, it's nothing, guard. One of my cellmates just had a nightmare. She's asleep now. Well, keep her quiet. <laughs> Madame Schreiber? Yes, Jacqueline. I-, I am sorry. Oh, that's all right. Try to sleep now. Yes. Yes, I will. I have some sleeping medicine I smuggled in. I guess the Nazis are not so smart as they think. There. Madame Scheiber? Yes, dear? Hold me tighter. Talk to me. Then then I won't feel so lonely. Why, of course, child. How... How is it that you are in a Nazi prison in France? The rest of us I can understand, but you, an American. Well, often lying here at night, I doubt that it really happened to me. It was all so strange. Would you like to hear the story? Oh, yes. Yes, Madame Scheiber. Tell it to me. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, presents another program of Words at War, which brings to radio important war books. Tonight, one of the most amazing true stories of this war, the story of Paris Underground by Etta Scheiber. In a cold, miserable prison cell, Etta Scheiber is bolstering the courage of her co-prisoner, Jacqueline, by telling her the story leading to her imprisonment. An experience Mrs. Scheiber herself found hard to believe had happened to her. You see, Jacqueline, I'd always had many friends in Paris. My husband was a newspaper man, and he'd often taken me there. When he died, my best Paris friend, Kitty Beaurepo, cabled me to come and live with her. Two rather settled ladies living in Paris. What a happy time we had. Three years. Then the war came. As the Nazis marched on Paris, we tried to drive south, but the roads were jammed. They were not cleared till Nazi dive bombers machine-gunned the crowds to clear the way for the German army. For a whole day, we sat and watched endless columns of stony-faced, gray-uniformed troops pass by. Then we were ordered to return to Paris. At a little wayside inn, we stopped and begged for something to eat. Madame, a million people have been through here in two days. There's nothing left. Nothing. Come, Kitty, let's go on. Monsieur, a cup of tea is all we ask. I have no tea. Nothing at all. I see. Thank you. Uh, One moment. This way, please. Into the back room. Be seated, ladies. Peter. I've remembered I have a little tea. Oh, tea, Kitty. And uh, some salami. A little. Monsieur, you're very kind. And some cheese. Oh. Also, I think a little sugar for the tea. Sugar? Monsieur, we don't know what to say. We were starved. You are English, madame? I was, but I'm a French citizen, since I married a Frenchman. My friend here is an American. Then you can do something for me. My English, it is not good, and I have someone here who must leave at once. But he will not listen to me. Wait here. Hmm. What's this, do you suppose? An English soldier, no doubt. If it is, he hasn't a chance of escaping. They are sure to get him. Here is the man. 
Good evening. Good evening. My name is William Gray. I'm a pilot, RAF. I'm in a bit of a jam. Got caught at Dunkirk. Couldn't get away. I've been working my way south, but the Germans have moved faster than I could. And now I... Now you're completely surrounded by them. Yes. I don't want to trouble you ladies, but if you will tell this French chap to be patient a while longer, I will go as soon as he can get me some civilian clothes. I'll be able to take care of myself after that. You're wrong, Pilot Gray. You haven't a chance in the world of getting away. And if you must be captured, then you'd best be in your uniform. That way they'll treat you as a prisoner of war. In civilian clothes, they'd shoot you as a spy. Oh, Kitty, no. Yes, Etta, they would. Uh, looks like my goose is cooked. Well, thank you, anyway. No, wait a minute. I have an idea. Etta. Our car. The luggage compartment looks oh, as... Oh, Kitty, if... you're crazy. Why, the Nazis have been stopping cars all day. They'd pick him up before we'd gone half a mile. Still, if we could get him to Paris, he might have a better chance. Mr. Gray. Yes? As my American friend here would say, how would you like to join us in a game of cops and robbers? The whole German army will be the cops. We three shall be the robbers. I think it might be rather fun. We felt brave and pleasantly adventurous then. We didn't know what we were getting into. German patrol stopped our car, but none looked in the luggage compartment, which opened into the space behind the back seats. And so we smuggled Bill Gray into an apartment occupied by three middle-aged women, Kitty, myself, and our Breton maid, Margot. He'd been there two days when Margot simply froze the marrow of our bones. The German Gestapo it is searching Paris, house by house, for hidden soldiers. <laughs> It's no use, Etta. I've been everywhere. I've made guarded inquiries until my tongue is dry. But no one can, or no one will, tell me anything. But, Kitty, there must be an underground railway. Some means, some system of getting men to unoccupied territory. Yes, but just try to get in touch with it. Where's Bill? Oh, he hid in the bathroom and he heard you at the door. He mustn't know it, Etta, but the Gestapo is getting closer and closer to our building in their search. Yes, he suspects as much. He wants to give himself up to save us in case they find him here. No, no, he mustn't. I was told today that the Germans are not treating captured British soldiers as prisoners of war any longer. They're shooting them as spies. The Gestapo net grew tighter and tighter around us, and we waited day by day, waited for that knock on the door that would mean discovery. And then one evening, Kitty fairly bounced into the apartment, her face one heavenly smile. Etta, Bill, it's fixed. Our troubles are over. No. What's happened? Margot? Margot, yes, madame. bring coffee at once and three cups. We've got to celebrate. Yes, madame, I have it on the stove already. Well, what on earth has happened? Etta, do you remember Chancel? We met him when we worked at that soldier's canteen. Oh, of course, that big husky veteran of the First War. That's the one, yes. Well, Chancel is a member of a combine that's getting French soldiers out of the country to fight for de Gaulle. No. How do they do it? They have one of their number in the police prefecture here in Paris. He gets them all the papers they need to keep the men out of jail in Vichy, France. Yes. And then it's just a matter of smuggling them across the demarcation line. And they have another man who owns an estate right on the line. So that's easy, you see. The estate owner just has to pay 50 francs a head to the German sergeant at the Border Patrol. Uh, so, the supermen aren't above taking bribes. Why, it's too good to be true. But it is true. Tomorrow, Chancel will bring us Bill's papers. We'll apply for gasoline to visit hospitals and prison camps with parcels. And we'll use that gasoline to drive Bill to the demarcation line. Oh, I don't know how to begin to thank you for... Oh. Who's that? Shh. Could it be your friend, Chancel? Margot. Yes, madame, I have a coffee ready here. Put it down, quick. See who it is. Yes, madame. Yes, sir. Quick, take Bill into your room. Try to hide him somewhere. Wait a moment. Take this third cup with you. Got it. The Germans are here. Soldiers? No, civilians. Gestapo. 
It'll hurry. Don't be silly, Margot. Don't keep the gentlemen waiting. Bring them in here. Yes, Bill, sir. Bill, leave the door open a chink so we can hear. Well, where can I hide? Oh, in the bathroom, oh, under the bed. I can't hear. Oh, what was that? I knocked something off the dresser in the dark. It's my brother's picture, Irving. He died here two years ago. He's such a wonderful brother, Irving. I'm sorry, Mrs. Scheibler. Oh, dear. Why am I telling you things like this now? I... Good heavens, I have an idea. Etta, this gentleman wants to see your room. Oh, that does it. No, it doesn't. Get undressed quickly. Now, don't argue. Just... Get undressed and get into bed. Pretend you're very ill. Just leave the talking right. to me. Here, tie this towel around your head. Hurry now. I'll give you just 30 seconds. Oh, come in, Kitty. Come in, come in right now. Well, did you call me, Kitty, dear? Yes, Etta. Gentlemen, this is my very dear American friend, Mrs. Scheiber. She's been living with me in Paris and finds herself an unwilling victim of the war. Far from home. Like yourselves. I'm from the Gestapo, Madame Scheiber. Wish to examine your room. Well, by all means. You'll have to excuse its appearance, however. My brother's in bed. He's quite ill. Afraid he may have contracted intestinal flu. There's so much of it in town now. I hope you won't disturb him. The light, please. It's all right, Irving. Just some official business. Don't try to talk, dear. Uh, this is my brother. His papers, please. Oh, certainly. They're right here in the drawer. Here we are. This is his passport. Yeah, this picture. It, picture? Uh, the... <laughs> Oh, of course. Poor Irving's been quietly raving all day, not being able to shave. Well, don't you worry, Irving. I'll get you to a barber tomorrow. It's identity card, please. Uh, here it is. And this card has expired. Why wasn't it renewed? Well, we intended to go back to America because of the war. We would have gone long ago if his health had been better. It just didn't seem worth renewing it under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. I see. Your own papers, please. Yes, here they are. Hmm. Yeah, very well. Oh, I'm terribly distressed about Irving, Kitty. Oh, I do hope poor Irving wasn't upset by our visitors, Etta. No, he didn't mind. Kurt! The list of tenants, please. The concierge has it. You, concierge, get over there. Oh, yes. Very well, yes. come on, woman. Tenant list for your house. Oh, yes. Chapelle, Alexandre, Lozé, Abert. I do not find the name of Madame's brother on this list. Madame's brother? Oh, Answer yes. Answer me, yes. woman. I, oh. Where's his name? Goodness, it's no crime to forget a name, is it? Irving isn't a regular tenant here. He's only been here since he was ill and he needed someone to look after him. Yes. Right, madame. I addressed my question to the concierge. Now, woman? Uh, I am sorry, sir. I forgot about the gentleman. He, he never asked me for a certificate of domicile, so he, he is not on my list. I shall add his name myself, then. Are you upset, Madame Beaurepo? I? Oh, you mean my heavy breathing. Asthma. Hmm. Mm -hmm. There. Now keep your attendance list correct from now on, concierge. Come, we shall leave. All right, well. Next day, with Chancel's help, we smuggled William Gray out of occupied France. I'll never forget how free from worry I felt that following day. And when Kitty returned from doing some work at the canteen, I guess my feelings were reflected in my eyes. Well, you do look good, Etta. I feel fine. And so will you, after you've had a cup of tea and some rest. Yes. Say, look here, I expected you home much earlier. What took you so long? Oh, I found I had something else to do. Oh, you always have. Hmm. Perhaps I'd better tell you about him. About him? Kitty, what have you been up to? I had to do it, Etta. I had to. He was walking along the road. I could tell he was an escaped soldier from the way his civilian clothes didn't fit him. I had to offer to help him. And? He was a French officer, escaped from a prison camp. I, uh, popped him into the luggage carrier. Kitty! Well, now, look, Etta. By tonight, he'll be on his way to join General de Gaulle. And then it'll all be over. It's as easy as that. Oh, Kitty... Do you realize you risk your life when you do a thing like that? You're quite willing to risk your life too, Etta. Well, yes, but 
Oh, Kitty, promise me not to get into another adventure this kind. Will you? All right, I promise. Where's the paper? Over there on the lounge. Nita. Hmm? Look at this. What is it? At the back of this newspaper here, this personal advertisement. Jonathan Burke is looking for his friends and acquaintances. Address Military Hospital, Doulon, Somme. Well, what about it? I've seen hundreds like it. Yes, so have I. But Jonathan Burke. That's English. Perhaps he's one of the boys from Dunkirk trying to contact friends who could help him escape. Kitty! <laughs> Yes, Jacqueline, as you probably guessed, we helped Jonathan Burke escape from the military hospital at Doulon. <laughs> Brought him clothes and sneaked him out in broad daylight right into the luggage carrier of our car. Then drove him to our own apartment. Or rather, Kitty did all of this. I just went along and kept wringing my hands in fear. Then, uh, two days later, Kitty took me for a drive. Well, Kitty, this is the way to the Doulon military hospital. Yes, of course. Are you crazy? No, dear, don't you see? By going back to the hospital, we'll be likely to divert suspicion from ourselves. Kitty Poripo, didn't you see the look we got from that French major who's running the hospital? Oh, Etta, dear, you worry so. As a matter of fact, I have another reason for going back to do along. Another reason? Oh, Kitty, oh, no, you wouldn't. But I must, dear. That poor, sick Corporal Meehan, he knew we were helping Lieutenant Burke escape the other day. He made me promise to come back and help him escape, too. Mother of mercy. Kitty, how long are we going to walk back and forth through these wards? It's too bad we didn't have a chance to talk to Corporal Meehan when we were in his ward, but... We just can't back go back there now without arousing suspicion. Shh, Etta. I won't shush. We'd better get out before that French major sees us. All right, Etta, all right. Here, let's make for that door over there. Uh, that's the first time you've talked sense in weeks. Uh, permit <gasps> me to introduce myself, ladies. Major Thibault. Thibault? You ladies have honored us with your visit before. It is really very kind of you to take such interest in so... Small hospital. Well, you see, Major... Would you be kind enough to answer one question? Where is Lieutenant Jonathan Burke? Why, you must be a mind reader, Major. We've been through the whole hospital looking for him. Our conversation will be shortened if you will be intelligent enough not to deny you helped him escape. escape. I know all about you, your nationalities. I can understand your sympathy with these British soldiers who are prisoners. However, we are concerned with decrees. You have violated the laws established by the high command of the occupying force. The penalty for your crime is death. Major, I assure you... We have you absolutely no... You are impressing no one. It is my duty to hand you over to the authorities, which at this time means the German army. I am a soldier. It is my habit to obey. But I am not only a soldier, ladies. I am also a Frenchman. That is why I have not yet reported the disappearance of Lieutenant Jonathan Burke. Major, I don't know how to tell you. Don't try. But I warn you, such a thing cannot be tolerated again. You must leave this hospital and never come back. Thank you, Major. I'm very happy to have met another real Frenchman. Good day, sir. Come along, Etta. Uh, you will pardon me, ladies, if I take the precaution of escorting you to your car. was too close for comfort. You see, Kitty, now, how right I've been to insist that you stop taking these chances. I know, Etta, you're perfectly right. It's too bad, of course, that we couldn't help more of the men. Some look so tragic. Yes. That sick corporal, Meehan, who watched Jonathan Burke escape. 
You know, today he looked at us so pathetically. Well, we'd only had a chance to speak to him and explain. That wasn't necessary, Etta. I slipped him a note when we entered his ward. Corporal Meehan is in the luggage compartment of our car right now. Yes, Jacqueline, that was Kitty. The most amazing woman I've ever known. I'm sure that Providence took a personal interest in our work, for it went on for months and months. The Gestapo set all kinds of traps for us. But we were clever enough, or lucky enough, to evade them. We were put in touch with a country parish priest, Father Christian Ravier, who had nearly a thousand British soldiers escaped from Dunkirk hiding in the woods. He became one of us. These men don't know French, so they would be helpless alone. We must send each of them on his way paired with a Frenchman. Oh, but, Father, that means more and more people will know what we're doing. We'll have to trust so many. What you don't realize, Madame Scheiber, is that all Frenchmen are with us. Only a very few serve the Germans. Have no fear, Madame Scheiber. All France is on our side. So we went ahead. We smuggled out 150 Britishers and 150 Frenchmen, pair by pair. Then one evening, I was alone in the apartment except for Margot. The doorbell rang. Margot answered it. Uh, we wish to see Madame Who Chirac. is it, Margot? There's no need of introduction. You remember us. Wait. Well, you two are the Frenchmen we sent out of the country with the Britishers. Oh, you shouldn't have come here, especially when you've been drinking. That is all right, madame, quite all right. Well, why did you come back to occupied France? Why? We gave Vichy a try, didn't we? Conditions are just as bad there. No work, no jobs, nothing. Work? Jobs? Is that why you crossed the line? Oh, you did not think we were fools enough to join the gold, did you? Please leave my apartment not at once. Not so fast. We wasted a lot of time getting those two fellows you sent with us out of the country. We demand that we be paid for our time. Understand? Get out of here, both of you. Get out. Marco, show these men out. Come on, we... out with you. Wait. Before I go, Madame Gibard, may I suggest you read this post there? Out, out with you. you... What does it say, Madame? 10,000 francs reward. The German high command will pay 10,000 francs to any person providing names and addresses of those engaged in hiding English soldiers or aiding them to escape. Oh, madame, you, you do not think that those two men would... Sell us out? 10,000 francs is a lot of money, Margot, and anyway, these boys are no good. <laughs> Mr. Schreiber? Yes? You're under arrest. Where are the others of your gang? Gang? I don't know what you mean. Never mind, Mrs. Schreiber. We'll get them. Have you ever noticed that when a string of pearls breaks and one of them drops off, the others fall on her? It seems we have broken the string. Follow they did, Jacqueline. First myself, then the others. For the priest, Christian Ravier. Death. For Monsieur Chancel. Five years of hard labor. Monsieur Tissier. Four years at hard labor. Mrs. Etta Scheiber. Three years at hard labor. And for Madame Kitty Borepo. Death. is the story, Jacqueline. But for people like you, it carries a message. A message which reads, don't give up. Never lose the things that distinguish freedom-loving people from those born for slavery. When Father Ravier faced that enemy court, they expected him to beg for mercy. Instead, he told them, you think you have beaten France. Well, France is still at war with Germany. The general surrendered to you, but the people did not. You will never win the war. There are 40 million in France against your 2 million soldiers. I do not expect to win justice in a court conducted under the sign of the swastika, but I know 
that in the end, divine justice will prevail. That's what a simple parish priest told the Nazis, the so-called conquerors, before they sentenced him to death, Jacqueline. Now you and I must try to have his courage. Don't you agree, my child? Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Jacqueline! Jacqueline! What's going on here? What's the matter? Oh, I see. She, she's dead, God. Jacqueline's dead. Well, she seemed to be healthy enough last night. What is that smell? That... Oh, poison, huh? A suicide. Well, small loss. I will have the body taken to the morgue. You, Shiva, comfort me. But, but I don't know anything about it. Oh, it's not a suicide. You're going to be released, Madame Shiva. Rick, look out, Released? It might be another Nazi toy. Shut up, you! Come, Madame Shiva. No, it wasn't another Nazi trick. They did release Mrs. Scheiber, and she is here at our microphone, the author of Paris Underground in person, to tell you just why the Nazis let her out of prison. Mrs. Etta Scheiber. The Nazis released me from prison not to do me a favor, but because they wanted to use me as part of a bargain. I was exchanged for the notorious spy, Johanna Hoffman, former hairdresser on the line of Bremen. When I was told this by an American official, I said what I believe, that Germany got the best of the bargain. Johanna Hoffman is certainly more valuable to the Germans than I ever could be to the United States. My dear Mrs. Shiver, that official said, suppose the British government in the last war had had a chance to exchange Edith Cavell. Well, he was wrong there. I'm certainly no Edith Cavell, but, but my friend Kitty is. I only followed where she led, and she is paying very dearly for all she did. I do not know whether or not the Germans have put her to death, but I shall go on hoping that the God of justice will continue to remain at her side, and whenever my heart begins to ache with loneliness for her, I have her last words to sustain me. The words she spoke before they separated us. Don't worry about me. I am not sad. I did what I had to do. I knew the price and I was willing to pay it. I have given England 150 lives for the one she's losing now. Think of that when you think of me. And when the war is over, go to England and walk along the embankment of the Thames in the spring, where I always used to walk. I will be with you. See if you can find some of the boys we sent to England. Tell them that as I once helped them, now they must help me. They must carry on the work I can no longer do by continuing to be what they have always been. Enemies to tyranny, unwavering defenders of freedom. <laughs> 